Welcome at E2E Designs. A while ago I did this paint job only with spray cans to show you that it's possible to paint your own bike at home DIY style and that was the result. And now I found a video from a young boy who did exactly this paint job on his own bike in his garage. So let's give it a go and let's check if it's possible to do my paint jobs. But first things first, he's a young boy, he tried to be creative, he's doing sports. That's very good and that's what I'm supporting. He's not into drugs or any other shit and he's not playing video games for 24 hours. No front if you are a gamer, I like gaming as well, but being creative, going outside, doing sports is the best thing you can do for you and your future. And one advice from my side to all the morons out there, if one of you tries to roast them in the comment section for his performance or his video, be sure I find you and I roast you as well. And be sure my flame's much higher than yours. So if you want to comment in the comment section, be kind. Criticizing is no problem, but the only person who roasts is me because I can give an advice, maybe a better advice. And if I can't give an advice, I will roast nobody. That's it, so let's start. So today I'm gonna to be painting this cycle frame along with some other parts that are with it. And I'm gonna do a cool design that ETE did and that inspired me and I'm gonna do a cool crackle effect with some Monster Energy logos, themes, whatever. But the first thing when you do is strip the paint. So I'll see you there. One big question. One big question. You have a perfect painted bike. It has a perfect fade on it. Neon yellow and neon green. Why do you want to strip it? That's the biggest question I have in the complete video. I'm not really sure if it's original, but it looks very good. So why don't you use it? You can use it, you can sand the surface and you can do the paint job direct on your neon green and neon yellow. So there's no need for stripping. If you have another color, you need to strip it, of course. I recommend sandpaper. If it's an aluminum frame, you can use paint stripper as well, but never use paint stripper on any composite or carbon frames, only on steel and aluminum. So let's go. Okay, so now I'm going to apply paint stripper that I have over there. I'm gonna apply paint stripper onto all the parts that have color on it. I'm gonna try to strip it down to the bare steel. And then after I get most of the color off, whatever, I'm going to sand it. And then of course, tomorrow my paint comes in. So I will start the painting process tomorrow, put primer, color, and I'll video all the process of that. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and get away at stripping this color off and sanding. So I'll be back when I'm ready to paint and mask. One advice, paint stripper is very toxic and it's very aggressive. He has only small gloves. There are big rubber gloves, chemical gloves who cover your complete arm. There are protection, there are eye protection, some goggles as well. Sometimes uh, it comes in your eyes or it can uh, leak in your eyes and that hurts very well. So make sure you are protected. Protect your eyes, protect your body when you work with paint stripper, okay? And another advice, if you do video filming, your viewers will, will uh, see what you do. They want to know what you do. So place the camera in front of you that everybody can see what you're doing. Now we have only you in the right corner, in the right upper corner and nobody can really see what you're doing. There's a lot of grass in your, in your front yard, but that's not so interesting. So place your camera on a better place and everybody's happy with your video. Okay, so I've already stripped off all the paint on this bike. We've sanded it and now I'm in the middle of masking. Yeah, it looks not so bad. It's really good, it's completely stripped. I recommend to do media blasting if you want to go fast. And yeah, paint strippers are bad chemicals and you have to dispose them. And a better economical way is to do media blasting. And if you do media blasting, you have also a perfect surface. There's no need for extra sanding, but the frame is good prepared for the next layers of primer and paint. So you did all right, that's very good. So let's mask it. I'm moving to finish this up and then I'll show the process of painting and I'll see you there. Yeah, masking takes some time, but he did a good job. You have to mask all the bearing seats and yeah, you can see it on the cranks. He's masking all these areas. And when you spend a lot of time in preparation, the quality of your paint shop is much better 
then if you hurry up. So take your time in masking and you will be much happier when assembling the bike. Okay, so I've masked everything, I'm ready to paint, and I've already cleaned and wiped down the frames, made sure that with wax and grease remover, there's no oils, residues on there, I have gloves on. Yes, that's right. You have to degrease the frame. You have to wipe it with some degreaser because you can uh, do fingerprints with your bare fingers. He has gloves. That's good. He has also a paint mask on the left side. That's also very good. Point for you. But there's another thing. If you spray with spray cans, the color, color goes everywhere. Everywhere in your garage, also on the trailer, on your motorbike, on your... Is an is it an F150? I think it's an F150. So if you want to paint, make sure you seal all the area around you with some tape and with some foil or what you have ever around. So yeah, that's what I what I can recommend. Make sure you seal the area. If he sprays, he will spray also the trailer. Dust comes off the trailer and around in the garage. That's not so good. So make sure you have a sealed area where you can spray or spray in the garden where nothing can cover this paint. And so I guess now it's time for the fun part and get the paint job rolling. Can you see all these clouds going around two meters around him? And that's all paint dust. And the paint dust goes everywhere, nearly everywhere. He covers everything in color. So invest some time in a, in a paint booth or go outside in the garden and paint it outside and you have no problem with any paint dust, any overspray around you. And one little word about the video performance. Your clients and your viewers or whatever, your followers want to see what you do. Now you are two meters away from the camera, only in one position. And yeah, show, the, show us what you are doing. Do some close-ups or something like that and everybody can follow you much better than in this total position of the camera, okay? It seems the color is on and he masked all the logos again and what I did in my original paint job, check the original paint job, I masked all the logos before I applied the crackle effect and now it seems he masked the logos again and sprayed again color and that's not so elegant because you have the color underneath your crackle and the first thing is you waste color and you produce gaps in between every layer of color and as much layer as you have, you have much more gaps and if you want to avoid these gaps in between the colors, apply as less color as possible. So there's no need to mask these areas again and to spray color again. You can use your base color underneath the crackle effect to do the logos. That's what I did. So let's check the original uh, video. But at first, let's see what he did and let's check this video. And it seems there's clear coat on and the crackle effect looks a bit, how can I say, uh, spotty, spot-like, camouflage-like, it's not even and there's a lag in, in using the, the spray cans. If you spray with spray cans, I say every time do the spray can dance, that's the spray can dance and what he did is he pointed the color and that's not right. So you have to fade it in long fades in a dance move. So if you do the dance move like I do in my video, you get a better and much even finish of the crackle effect than it's this one. Okay, so I have finished the paint job. And it would be also interesting to see what he's used as a masking foil and how he, how he did the masking. Did he cut it as well with a knife as I did? Did he do it by hand or did he use the sign maker or whatever? That would be interesting if you do video stuff. You have to let your audience know what you're doing, all the steps. 
There are a lot of questions when you watch this video the first time and you don't know my original video. So if you do a video next time, let your audience know what you are doing about all the steps. And yeah, that's what I can recommend. I cleared the bike, I put clear coat on it. It has a nice finish. There's not gaps or anything. Colors are nice. I like how it turned out. Obviously there's some imperfections. It is my first paint job. I do like how it turned out though. I'm happy with it. And well, the next thing really right now is to just take off the masking and put the bike back together. So let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, two thumbs for me because he did it end to end. That means he didn't stop. He did the complete paint job from start to finish, end to end. That's two thumbs from my side for the first paint job. Very good. Yeah, now we have to mount the bike and let's check what he can do with his bike. And yeah, if you mess up, try it again, try it again. There's no perfect paint job the first time. That's what I can tell you. You need a lot of practice. It's not magic, but you need a lot of skill if you do painting, especially cycle painting. So don't give up. He didn't give up. And that's two thumbs from my side. The paint job's not high quality and he's not as my one. But if you want to do fade paint jobs, you need some practice. And I recommend to do some panels, test panels at first to find your skills, your painting skills. But he has a bike and he's happy with it and that's what counts. So let's check what he can do with the bike. Oh, he's doing some dirt bike riding in his backyard maybe. Do you have a backyard trail? That's cool. I don't know where he's from. It looks a bit Canadian or American-like. So if you see this video, give us some information about you if you like in the comment section. And yeah, good video. I like it. I like the way you did it the first time. I like the way you tried. Trying is a good thing, giving up is not a good thing, and you... Oh, what he's doing? Is he jumping over the helmet? Not bad for the first time. Yeah, and the most important thing is, he has a personal bike, and that's what counts. If you can personalize something, you have a deeper emotional connection to the pieces. And yeah, that's custom painting, that's custom culture. So I hope you like this video. Give him also some thumbs up in his original video. I will link it underneath in the video description. Yeah, and that's what I can tell you about it. You have to improve some things, something in your video and editing skills, also in the painting skills, but don't give up. Two thumbs up from my side and for the quality, uh, it's not so perfect, but if you are happy, I'm too, so thumbs up and in the next side, do it better and I will watch it as well. My audience will watch it as well and good luck doing it again. And yeah, have fun with your bike, have fun riding. Thank you that you have watched my video. Check also if it's on Facebook for my daily stuff and for more stuff. Watch also my other videos if you are into custom painting and see you, goodbye.